Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at Triceratops Rampage from the LEGO Jurassic World Legends of Isla Nublar, a little non-canonical spin-off miniseries, and Dilophosaurus on the Loose. I'm going to look at this one here first though. The builds are a net shooting rideable quadcopter and then a vendor, just a general gift stand with some food and some memorabilia. We also get three minifigures in this set and a brand new dinosaur mold. There are only two pieces in this build, so there's only minimal articulation. I guess some is better than none. They've done dinosaurs previously that had no ability to move anything, but this just has the lower jaw that can be opened up, which makes for a good look itself. But the rest of it is just one piece, so there's nothing else you can do. You have that single open stud on the top. You can attach things there if you want. You don't have to make it look like you're riding it or you attach a, a rope to it or something. And the dual molding is very nice between the medium nougat color and the olive green. And the medium nougat goes all the way up the spine right up into the head. Looks really good. Yeah, just overall I like the look of this, but it is a bit limited. You can't even turn the head from side to side. The small gift shop stand has a lot of character with the suggestion of a huge dinosaur jaw that's open there. It has, has some nice uh, building techniques to put that together. You can see a little bit of building on the side, even around just the frame of the thing. You can buy a couple of hats there. You can buy some popcorn. They have two of the printed popcorn base piece. And there are also some, I don't know if these are supposed to be prints or booklets just small things that you can purchase and they just have stickers on them for detailing so there's a map this one i think is just intended to be an art print that's all and probably something similar here although this could also be maybe a puzzle you know kind of use your imagination a little bit and around the back they have a couple of clips to hold on to some minifig accessories so whoever works here can also clean up some messes around the place and they've set it up so that a figure can stand directly behind here, of course, but you can also put this figure up on a slightly elevated platform. There is enough room for even a, a hat to fit under there, so that elevates them up a little bit and you know, just makes it easier for them to look down at possible you know, passers-by and folks who might be trying to buy something at the regular ground level. I continue to be amused by the way it appears that the entire Lego company just woke up one day a year or two ago and realized that multi-copters exist. <laughs> so now they're just putting multi-copters in so many different things. But this is a nice one. This is not one that I will make fun of in and of itself because it, it's designed well. I like the motor pods here. The props maybe are elevated up a bit much, but I, I think for this scale, and for the number of pieces, this is set up pretty nicely. It even has a wing on the back, which just makes it look really sporty, makes it look really fast. The main build, the main chassis, is a jet engine piece, which has been reused for one of its most common purposes, a net launcher. And the plunger is back here. You push on that, and out this comes, and it's the newer style of round net. Sometimes these work okay. In my, in my experience, usually they don't. I like the fact that this is black and not the red that they did previously. But this is this is nice. And the way that a figure would actually ride on the thing would be just on the back, just kind of holding on for dear life. I, I wish they had included a, uh, a helmet, but this is the general idea. You know, you're really riding on the thing. And it makes sense for the figure actually to be looking down for a change. You know, if this was done as a motorcycle, then it'd be like, what are you looking at, dude? But here... You know, you're probably going to be above whatever you're looking at. So that totally makes sense. And you have some indicator lights on the underside. This is good. The figures here left to right are Owen Grady, an officially unnamed Jurassic Park work, Jurassic World Park worker. And the kid on the right is named Hudson Harper. And I love the kid on the right's torso. He's got that hoodie there, which looks pretty good. And then he's got the Jurassic World T on underneath. Not the best printing as usual these days for the white part, but it, it doesn't bother me as, as much as usual because I can just see that as being off-white, you know, and it's not trying to match his skin tone or anything like that. I'm perfectly fine with that. This works out well. All three of these figures look good to me for what they are. 
yeah, just uh, have absolutely no complaints about these. And just looking at the rest of the details of their faces, you also get alternate faces for each, which is also great. These are the leftover spare parts, and it's a really small set, so you can't have expected much, but I do like these two, including the, I believe, new for 2019, uh, light gray color for that part. This set is $20 US, and honestly, I can see that value here. With the amount of stuff that's included, with the number of figures, plus the animal, I'd love to see it like a few dollars cheaper, but I think 15 would be probably even too low for it so i think this is fine as a suggested retail price and if you can find it at a little bit of a discount then that'll be absolutely perfect triceratops rampage is a different type of set it feels weird to me it's kind of a hodgepodge let's look at the individual features though the main build is this egg spinner ride but before we get to that and before minifigures get to that you have to go through this queuing area with a little bit of fence there. You also have stairs to get up to one of the seats at a time and some signage over on the left. But before many figures even get to that, they have to pass through the archway, which is a miniaturized version of a Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World arch, which totally makes sense. It just has the suggestion of or the, the sign or symbol for the ride there and there's not enough room for most dinosaurs to get through here so don't, don't worry about that but it's just for people and you can also fit an atv through there quad through there so that'll work later the ride itself is actually pretty good modeled after the concept of an incubation lab and you spin a knob back here and everybody spins around this is very good with most of the mechanism hidden away i mean the large gears are obvious there but you don't see you know, any of the connection between this this actuator back here, which is nice and integrated in, you know, it doesn't have a big, bright red thing. You know, again, Lego doing much better this year uh, with their integrations of things, not making them too ridiculous looking. And this just, it just works so well. I just can't complain about this. I did have a little bit of trouble making sure that the parts didn't bind all the the axles and the gears and everything, but ultimately it worked out just fine. I have only one complaint really about this, and it's the number of stickers. You can see that each of the seats has four stickers on it. You've got six stickers around the top here, one large sticker there, which I'm perfectly fine with, but then also the platform getting up to it has stickers there, there's a sticker there. There's also a sticker for the arch in total. I think it's 25 stickers or something like that, just for this one ride, and that's a lot. I mean, a lot, lot. I do really like these here, but uh, I wish they had a little bit of uh, a little bit of print budget to at least replace one of those repeating pieces with a print. Or if they could have done them all as prints, that would have been all the better. More okay with the stripes because you can just leave those off if you, if you don't like them. But overall, this just it just works. It works nicely. It's smooth and it makes sense. At the back here, also notice there's a clip on one side and a bar on the other. And that's compatible with the sort of system that they established for fencing in the Jurassic World, the mainline Jurassic World themed sets that have come out previously. So you can connect fencing there. And as a matter of fact, this set itself comes with a new section or a couple of sections of, of electrified fencing. This is interesting here because it allows you to collapse it all down. So if the Triceratops goes on a rampage, for example, you know, it will be able to just crush right through here. The idea is that, you know, as usual, the electrification fails. So this is saying that everything is safe, this is saying that everything is not safe whatsoever. And then the, you know, the animal will immediately recognize that and come crashing through here. As an action feature, this works great. Unfortunately, uh, these things don't like to stay very straight when it is not in its down position it works really well when it's down when it's not it's difficult to get those to be straight i messed around with them a little bit but i need to mess around with them a little bit more and then over here there's just another small section of fencing and this is an articulated area and it just has the little display with a single sticker on it which does make sense and i'm fine with looks pretty good to let you know who's in this particular enclosure you know it's obviously intended to be just part of a 
a continuous system of fencing and there's another part that you can connect there also if you want instead of having both of these together I could go ahead and put this on the other side to change up the shape of things and you know those can be bent around in in different ways and you don't have to attach them to the right here that's just a suggestion you can also have them in a completely separate area but this is kind of an idea you know where you could have this at a corner like that the inclusion of a full-sized triceratops is a big deal in this set because they've only made one of these previously and uh, it's it has gotten harder and harder to find. I'm glad that the mold is still available, or the mold set is still available. They have unique uh, legs to go with this, and this looks good to me. You have separate pieces for the horns. This is a slightly softer material, has a softer finish to it as well, just a little bit of texture. That's also here and also for the beak. I think the color scheme looks good. I do like that. I like the use of the tan down here. You know, the earth tones are just traditional and, and they work. I think it I think it makes sense. Head goes up and down. You can also rotate around like so. Oh, I think I might have just yeah, I just pulled it out a little bit. But there we go. Rotates around a bit and the legs go forward and back. So you can easily make it look like it's in somewhat of a a moving pose and having four legs really helps with that. But yeah, this is pretty good. You can also Put a rider on the back of it if you want. This is, I'd say, most of the value of the set right here. And I think it is good. I like it. Probably the smallest value item in the set is this quad ATV, which I think is fine. And this is for Owen to ride in to the rescue. You know, he will go chasing after the Triceratops, or possibly try to lead it away. I like the fact that this does include at least a couple of clips on the back, and they also have a place to attach a trailer with a ball hitch at the back, so this is actually more useful than your standard run-of-the-mill quad. Uh, I actually like its its height. You know, it's too far off the ground for something realistic, or it, especially with such low-profile tires, but I don't know. I, I just kind of like the look of it. It seems fun to me. I mentioned Owen leading the animal away, and this is how he would do it, with a carrot on a whip, because, of course, Triceratops was an herbivore. These first two figures are Owen in full casual form, and actually, at first, I didn't even realize that was supposed to be skin tone that's printed on the torso there at, at the top. I literally didn't realize that. I thought there was another, like, a, a T underneath. But, yeah, again, printing issues, Lego they're doing that these days. Not good. On the right is a, well, a tourist, an unnamed tourist with a nice torso print. I like that design. And each of these has an alternate face, which is good, especially for the scenarios in this set. And that's the, I'm having fun on the ride. And that's the, oh my goodness, is that a triceratops coming right at me? Face. And here we have Drs. Masrani and Miles. And I think that the faces for both of these are great. But is it just me or is the print for Dr. Masrani's torso mm, kind of out of place? It looks really flat to me. It, it almost looks like it's going for a Lego Simpsons style, you know, with its, with its graphic style. It just doesn't match the other stuff that Lego does these days in general. But I really like the faces, that's for sure. And look, they actually got a little bit of skin tone print on the torso for Dr. Miles that almost matches the the plastic color. It's a little bit bright here, but you know, it's difficult to really mess up printing against white. I actually could have done without that skin tone myself because uh, for folks who, you know, pay attention to small details and limits the use the usefulness and usability of that torso for other custom figures. But both of these faces are also very good. Yeah, they did a fantastic job on these. I really like them. Yeah, very nice graphic design work for the faces, the torsos. Hmm, not as good. Bigger set, more generous selection of spares, including a full whip and one of those silver wire type pieces. This one is $60. And of course, I expect the price of this to be higher than the part count would suggest because they include not only a multi-material animal here, but a pretty large one. Now, the fact that 
it's rare to get a Triceratops from Lego. It really should not factor into the price at all, and I don't think that it really does. But for me, what's lacking in this set value-wise is, is just uh, all this. You know, that is a good little ride right there. It's pretty solid, it's pretty dense, has a lot of stuff going on with it. But all the rest of the stuff is just very lightweight sprawl. Okay, yeah, you've got that. I mean, that's a few dollars worth right there. But I don't feel like the the total amount of space that gets covered with the the contents of this set is a good measure of the amount of stuff here because the fencing, so much of what's here is just fencing. And there's not a lot of volume there. There's not a lot of mass. I think there's not a lot of value behind much of that. So in all, this just doesn't feel like it's worth its price. I think that each thing is designed fine for what it is. I personally could have done without this. I feel like that doesn't add very much value. This works well in its down position or partially down. This little section here is fine. This is okay, but not a great use of parts. That's a cool little vehicle. The figures, I think, are very good. Triceratops is great, but the value is not there overall. And one other thing that I really was not happy with, just for the sake of scale, here's the Triceratops, and here's a figure, okay? So this is a pretty big box, and when I opened it, literally less than half of it was parts. I had, you know, I opened it like this, and, and literally, the, the, the parts level was down here. There was so much air, just open space, and then the bags themselves were full of air as well. It was it was total potato chip uh, situation. Potato chip! And I, I, I just, I don't like that. So overall, I am unfortunately not too happy with this set. I would like to see it discounted very heavily. I've uploaded my build videos for both of these sets, and with this batch of builds, I have once again markedly, noticeably improved the sound quality and fidelity for the pure builds versions, the real-time versions. And if you're not interested in just running those in the background and listening to the sounds of LEGO parts, then you can see the speed builds still, which are currently being uploaded at 60 frames per second, so a little bit smoother. I'm always trying to improve things, so I hope you like one of those. Thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you again as soon as I possibly can.